Let's go! All right, time to pull up a chair and talk some Dynasty football. I'm your host, JJ Wenner, on Twitter at JJ Wenner, and this is the Rod Pod. Joining me is the newly announced smartest teacher in eighth grade, Big Daddy Don Detweiler. How are you doing, sir? Dude, I'm living the dream here. My Steelers are 2-0. and oh. I'm evidently the smartest man in eighth grade, so yay for me. That is wonderful news. Yeah, it is. It's, it was fantastic news. I was a little disappointed. I thought there was more of a competition, but it's obviously the science teacher. Uh, with us, and although we may be an ocean away, I just wish it was a little bit further. Uh, <laughs> my friend, Duncan Smith. How are you doing, Duncan? <laughs> I, I, I was doing good until after that intro. Um <laughs> thanks for having me on the uh, little bit of the last minute absolutely we're so glad you can join us uh and it was last hey minute. are you are you I, I am absolutely ecstatic to have you here and back with us again one of our favorite guests the math genius from mexico and a writer for b roto fantasy you can find him at ff underscore casanova Santiago Casanova, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me again. I had a great time last time, and I'm really looking forward to this one. Well, you know, I am so appreciative of you and Duncan becoming available. We had a last-minute cancellation. Actually, we had two last-minute cancellations, and you two slid right you, in. So thank you so much for joining us. Now, you can follow us on Twitter at Ride or Dynasty. You can also check out our website, riderdynasty.com to see all of our new articles that are publishing every day, every other day. We're putting a lot out right now in season. Now, right before we start, I just want to say I hope you had the opportunity to listen to the Cover 3 podcast. Uh, it was founded, written, and produced by our own writers, Jared Clifton, Brendan Taff, and Blair Perot. They're doing a fantastic job. So give them a listen. They... They come out every Wednesday morning, I believe. So give them a listen. And guys, I don't know if you heard that uh, there were a couple injuries this past week that were kind of big. So we actually had to make an emergency call. We hit 911 and our man, Kyle Allen, is delivering. Next man up. We always pride ourselves on the next man up. We always talk about the next man up. It's the next man up, Lee. Hey man, next man up. That kind of hurt me, though. All right, what's going on, riders? Welcome into the week three edition of the Next Man Up Injury Report. My name is Kyle Allen, and if you listen to my week one report, you heard me mention that week one was rough for injuries. Well, unbeknownst to me, week two somehow got even worse. It was an awful week for a lot of very fantasy-relevant players. So we're going to go through just a couple of the highest on the list work through each position. I'll cover each and every fantasy relevant injury in my article that'll be releasing Friday morning at the very latest. So if you're listening to this on Thursday night, if it's not already up, check out the article on Friday morning to get more information on all of your favorite fantasy relevant players. So kicking it off, we're going to start off with the QBs. We have Tyrod Taylor of the Los Angeles Chargers. This was a weird one. Taylor was taken to the hospital mysteriously on Sunday just before the game started with air quotes, difficulty breathing. Turns out that a team medical staffer was administering a pain-killing injection to Tyrod Taylor's ribs where he had suffered an injury previously in the week. Turns out his lung was accidentally punctured during this procedure, which is what ultimately sent him to the hospital. He's since been released. He's list currently listed as questionable for week three, but it sounds more and more like rookie Justin Herbert is going to take over the wheel for now. Usually a punctured lung is six to eight weeks, but nothing's normal about this situation. Until we really know more and hear more about Tyrod Taylor's prognosis, Justin Herbert is the sure starter in Los Angeles. Moving on to the running backs, the consensus or nearly consensus top two running backs both went down with significant injuries this week. 
First of all, we'll start off with Saquon Barkley. He has unfortunately torn his ACL and will miss the rest of this season. While this is horrible news for Saquon personally, and we wish him the best, and horrible news for fantasy managers, there is a fallout, and we have to look for the next man up. The Giants were quick to double down on this by signing free agent running back Devonta Freeman, previously of the Atlanta Falcons. Freeman hasn't played in the NFL in a while, so it may take a little bit of time for him to acclimate back to the speed of the league. The other running backs in New York are Deion Lewis and Wayne Gallman. While Lewis looked great in Week 2 filling in for Barkley after his injury, Wayne Gallman was a healthy scratch. Whether this was because he wasn't able to perform at the level that they wanted or just because of the proposed game script, we don't know. So it'll be up to week three to see who ends up being the lead back in this backfield. I personally think after a week or two, Devonta Freeman has the best chance to take over, but I'm avoiding this backfield until we know more. Next up for the running backs, in most leagues, he was the consensus number one overall pick, Christian McCaffrey. He suffered a high ankle sprain and has since been placed on IR, which means that he will miss at least three weeks. In this situation, the next man up is going to be Mike Davis. Mike Davis came in. He wasn't able to contribute very much on the ground, but he hauled in eight passes for over 70 yards, making himself a flex-worthy PPR asset. Moving on to the wide receivers, we'll start off with Cortland Sutton of the Denver Broncos. He started the season with a shoulder injury, and it ends abruptly with a torn ACL. Much like Saquon Barkley, he will miss the rest of the season, which raises the question, who's the next man up in Denver? The obvious answer is rookie Jerry Judy. He currently leads the team in targets and seems to be the obvious incumbent number one receiver in Denver anyways. However, KJ Hamler's debut occurred in week two, and he matched Judy for seven targets. He's sure to contribute in the deep passing game due to his ability to take the top off the defense, and I'm very excited to see what these two rookies can do. Next up, we have Paris Campbell of the Indianapolis Colts. It's a heartbreaking injury for Campbell after he suffered multiple injuries in his rookie season last year. Campbell unfortunately suffered an injury to his PCL and MCL. At this point, his return is unknown, and they've placed him on the IR. When Campbell missed time last year, Zach Pascal stepped up in a big way and contributed in the Colts' passing game. Look for him and rookie Michael Pittman to be the next men up for Indy. Lastly, we'll take on the tight ends. George Kittle suffered an MCL sprain and a bone bruise in his knee in week one. This injury caused him to miss two and is currently questionable for week three. While he's confident he can play and he has since returned to practice, the 49ers may be wise to not rush him back. They'll be playing in MetLife Stadium this week, which is known for its turf field. Turf fields are notoriously tough on knee injuries where players have to twist and turn as a foot can easily get caught and cause further injury. If Kittle is to miss week three, look for Jordan Reed to fill in for him as he did in week two. He was a fantastic flyer, and I believe he will be again this week. That's all for this week's edition of the Next Man Up Injury Report. Keep an eye out for the full article on our website, rideordynasty.com, coming out soon. And if you'd like to follow me or tweet at me, you can find me on Twitter at kallen underscore four. Now, back to the boys for the rest of the pod. Well, you know, that idea led me to think of what we should talk about on this show tonight. I know that if your rosters are anything like mine, we are making some tough decisions, finding players healthy enough to start in our league right now. Um, So I'm calling this the depth chart dive. This is when, you know, some of all of all of us are suffering from injuries So I'm just going to go through matchup by matchup this weekend and see if there's anybody who any of you three would be willing to start in a game. All right. That's pretty simple, right? You guys get what we're doing? Yeah, clear enough. Sounds great. Yeah. Okay. Um, Awesome. I I probably should say first that, to be honest, I I pretty much escaped the red week unscathed. Um, I, I have no one on IR. This is why nobody likes your country. (laughs) (laughs) I I, I thought I should, uh, in in case I start getting a little bit smug during the content, I thought I should perhaps. You know, I look for your smugness, so I'm I'm happy that it will be present. Duncan, all you Uh, did is just call down the thunder now, because half your roster is... Oh yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know, um, I know. Tonight's game. Let's start there. Miami versus Jacksonville, since you might have some a little bit of time left to uh, make these changes, but I, obviously not when you're listening to this. But Miami, last year, supposed tankers, ended up not tanking. Everybody now said Jacksonville was going to tank this year. They're obviously tanking. They're not tanking either. Now, outside of a few name players, 
Uh, some of these lower ranked guys are making waves. Who are we starting this week out of these three players? Miles Gaskin. Uh, I'm not sure why Jordan Howard is getting touches. He has 13 rushes this season for 11 yards and two TDs. Ugh. Gaskin looks much better than him. Keelan Cole returning to rookie form with 12 targets and 11 receptions in the first two weeks. Or James Robinson coming off of a 16 carry, 102 yards with one touchdown, also adding three receptions for 18 yards. Who are we starting among those three? Santiago? Uh, me personally, I'm considering James Robinson. I think his backfield is a little bit more clear than Miami's, so he'll get the bulk of the work. And I'm still not convinced that Brita and Howard will not take carries away from Gaskin. Can't argue with that. Duncan, your thoughts? None of them. Um, nope, you have to pick yeah. one. Who are you well, starting? <laughs> no, we're, we're, we've gone into proper terrible Thursday night football now. Um, it's it's not worth it. I, I, I would agree with Santiago um, Robinson if you're that desperate. And I know that you know it has been a brutal week. So he's probably the guy to go for, but realistically, you're you're not wanting to pick a Thursday night running back from this lot. Uh, Don, Don, tell me what, okay. tell me, tell me who you think we could start. Well, I'll tell you, I am starting Cole in two different leagues now, simply because the Jags can't stop anybody and will need to continue to throw the ball. He's getting all kinds of targets, and Gardner has looked so good so far. There's no reason not to get him in the roster if you have the opening and really need it. He's been available readily on a lot of waiver wires. I know I was uh, grabbing him in three different leagues on waivers and was successful in getting him twice, and he's in both lineups. So he's a value start right now and has carved himself a big role in that offense. And don't forget, uh, DJ Chark is out for tonight, so he is the wide receiver too. Uh, basically behind Chenault right now. Uh, all right, going to Sunday's games. We have the LA Rams at the Bills. Uh, Cam Akers has joined the injured ranks while Josh Allen is showing that he can put up the big premier numbers. Now, I have four guys here. I want to know who are you willing to start and you have to pick one, Duncan. First up is Malcolm Brown. 29 carries, 126 yards, and two TDs this season. Daryl Henderson, 15 for 87 and one TD, showing that he is more explosive, uh, especially in the receiving game. Van Jefferson, eight targets so far this year, the clear wide receiver three in LA. Or John Brown, uh, who we thought would be an afterthought with Diggs in town, but he's had 16 targets and two D TDs this season. Who are we picking? Duncan? Is, is Cam Akers out? Cam Akers is out. Yeah, Darrell Anderson, man. Okay, you, you think he's going to get the carries over Malcolm Brown? Yeah, I think so. I don't think I don't think Brown's done enough. Henderson did enough last week that he should be the starter this week. And if he continues the same form, then you know there, there's touchdowns, there's yardage there. So I don't think there's much. Don, where are you going with this start? Of the four, I like John Brown. Now, John Brown is currently qu listed as questionable, but was last week and played very well. I see no reason in the world why that wide receiver tandem with Diggs and Brown can't continue to uh, maintain the offensive production they've got going so far. I was worried that Diggs was going to kind of take the deep roll away from Brown, but really what he's done is cleared things out and allowed Brown to run the intermediate routes and get the ball with speed. So his yards after catch have actually increased. So I'm going to start Brown out of that grouping. All right. And Santiago. I have to agree. Brown is my guy here. Uh, and you said it yourself, Josh Allen has been playing lights out. So why wouldn't you want to start a receiver tied to Josh Allen? Also, uh, the backfield, the Rams have, it's a competition. There's no clear starter per se. So it, I don't like any of those guys. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree and go with John Brown, um, only because he's had such production so far uh, this off uh, this season that I didn't think he was going to get the looks. But John Brown delivered for me last year. He's still delivering, so I'm definitely starting him. 
the next game is Chicago at the Falcons. Uh, don't let the record fool you. The Bears have had a pretty easy schedule with the Lions and the Giants so far. Uh, Atlanta will hopefully remember that they are allowed to field onside kicks this week. Who are you going to start between these two guys? Jalen Johnson in quarterback required IDP leagues, my IDP friends, or Darnell Mooney, third in receiving yards between A-Rob and Miller. We'll go to Don first. In the early going, Mooney has been successful in catching downfield passes and getting chunk yardage and has gotten targeted by what's actually turned out to be a not as bad as expected Bears passing game. So I'm going with Mooney in this one, at least in this matchup. IDP-wise, it all depends entirely on your league scoring format. But, uh, yeah, I like I like Mooney. Even though he's a rookie, he's certainly demonstrated an ability to play thus far, and I don't see that changing. Santiago? For me, it's Mooney as well. Uh, he got a touchdown last week, and I expect the Bears-Falcons game to be a high-scoring one. A lot of throwing, and that might get him the targets he needs to produce. So the Houston Texans are at the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, Houston's nightmare start to the season. I mean, you talk about a rough couple games, starting against the Chiefs, the Ravens, and then the Steelers. So in this game, who would you start? Jordan Akins, nine targets and 94 yards and a TD so far in two weeks. Benny Snell had a super week one, followed by nothing. Is there a bounce back? Can he be trusted? Or Chase Claypool, second on the team with 127 receiving yards, but only on five targets. Can he be trusted? Santiago, who would you start? Now, here, out of the two Steelers, I have to go Chase Claypool. I don't think Bell, Ben, I mean, sorry, Snell has any value if Connor doesn't get injured. And Claypool has been making catches, and it's clear that Ben likes him. So it's Claypool for me. All right, and you're going to take that over Aikens. Yes, absolutely. All right, let's go to Don. I uh, am already on record as saying that it should have been Benny Snell time a long while ago in Pittsburgh, and they have done absolutely everything to completely ignore me and continue giving the ball to uh, to Connor. And uh, he did absolutely nothing until one play at the end of last game. I still have every reason to believe that they're going to continue to give Connor the ball until he is unable to take it. So in this case, I'm going to take Aiken of the group because the Steelers thus far have given up significant yields to Noah Fant in uh, week two and to the tight end they faced in week one. So coming from the tight end position here, that's been a problem in the Steelers secondary and uh, Aikens is athletic enough to take advantage. Uh, I'm going to lead Aikens. Big body. They need a tight end down there. He's doing a pretty good job catching the ball. I think he's going to put one in this week. All right. Next match. Cincinnati Bengals at the oh, Philadelphia Eagles. Now, Gio Bernard, a favorite of our friend Santiago Casanova, has been targeted 12 times this season. Drew Sample, uh, a waiver wire pickup, will be able to fill the new shoes of uh, CJ Uzuma. And Deshaun Jackson. Now, I'm not sure if he was the official starter before the year, but I definitely didn't think he would do this much. Uh, are we ready to trust the Holocaust denying bird? Absolutely not. Uh, I want no part of the Philadelphia offense that's not Miles Sanders. And I just do not see that working out for DJX. I can't trust him. He's entirely a boomer bus wide receiver. And in this case, with... The early tendency we've seen from Burrow to target tight ends. Uzma had two excellent starts before getting hurt. Uh, let's try a, try a sample out here. As a young quarterback, the young quarterback's best friend has always been the tight end. So sample uh, gets a sample size here to see if he's any good. No, 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 no. Santiago, you're up. <laughs> now, if you... Listen to the podcast last time I was on. You heard my Giovanni Bernard rant. However, I'm not picking Bernard right here. I'm, I'm going D-Jax. Yeah, I know. I know. Surprising, shocking. But I think Carson Wentz has to throw to the outside. And neither Dallas Goddard or Sackers play the outside. Now, Rager is injured. 
So Deshaun Jackson is the number one option. I think you should plug him in your lineups. And yeah, I mean, it's hard to go to let go of Bernard. But yeah, Deshaun Jackson is my pick. Wow. I am shocked. Duncan, who would you pick? I'm going to go with the Bengals side of the ball. Um, Philadelphia, Luca Mass. Joe Burrow looks like he's more than willing to throw the ball around. Um, in fact, is he is he currently leading the league in pass attempts? I'm, I'm not sure if he is, but I think he's up there. He's definitely, you know, he seems to be, he's willing to target his receivers, his tight ends, so I would much rather take a, a Bengal than anything that's currently going on in Philadelphia, other than Don says, is, um, Miles Sanders. Yeah, I would definitely go with Drew Sample here. Um, he is filling in uh, for somebody who was being used a lot, and he already has a decent amount of targets himself. So I'm going all in on Drew Sample. Uh, next matchup, San Francisco 49ers versus the New York Giants. That might have been great in the early 90s. Now it's not. Uh, next man up has never met more than this week for the 49ers. So we have, we, we have a bunch of people here to talk about. So who do we start? Jarek McKinnon, Nick Mullins, Jordan Reed. Now, how ironic that injuries have led to an opportunity for Jordan Reed, but uh, yeah, let's see if we can do it twice in a row. Dion Lewis or Devonta Freeman out of those five players, Duncan, Duncan Smith, from Scotland, the pride of Scotland. Who would you start? I mean, hopefully you're not starting any of them in the MetLife. That's the point. Dion Lewis has he has he has he got the best knees? I mean, literally with with that turf, we're talking about whose knees are likely to last more than five minutes of football. Like is is Devonta Freeman's pretty much running on to do a you know like if there was crowd, if there was fans in the stadium he'd be running on to do a sort of a lap of honour and then disappear again because that's probably what the turf is going to do to his knees it's McKinnon McKin McKinnon does he even have knees anymore well you do kind of need knees um, of the assembled give me Mullins you know he's shown to be a capable backup he's going to get the start this week for because Jimmy G is out, and there's enough talent remaining that he'll be okay there, uh, considering the rest of the crew. Now, Jordan Reed, the former Washington football team person, he was great, and he filled in wonderfully last week, but still, I'll take Mullins in this situation. I don't know that he can do it twice, and the all-injured team that you've presented to me is uh, slim pickings at best. Santiago? Now, you know I wasn't a fan of Jimmy G when he was starting, so I'm definitely not a fan of Nick Mullins now that he's starting. And the Giants' backfield is, is just a time bomb. Um, no one's going to produce. You have Wal Gallman, Lewis, and Freeman. They're all going to vulture each other. No one's going to be productive. And I don't think Reed can reproduce the same production he got last week. So my pick here is Jarek McKinnon. I was a big fan of him two years ago. I drafted him. He got injured. And I think this is his comeback tour. I'm going to agree. I'm going to say Jarek McKinnon is the guy I would go with. Yeah, I'll be happy to see him break out and maybe reward a share or two I have left. I looked at the Las Vegas Patriots game. There is nothing really there you want to start outside of the starters. Uh, Demir Bird is the only guy who stood out. Uh, last week, he put up nine targets, um, and he got six receptions for 72 yards. Does anybody think that's going to repeat? I mean, that came on a game in which Kim had almost 400 passing yards. Uh, I don't think that they're going to need to throw the ball that often. I think this will be a closer game. So uh, I expect more to be distributed in terms of running. So, no, I don't see that happening again. Uh, all right. Let's go to the Tennessee Titans versus the Minnesota Vikings. Now, we have Adam Humphreys, the former Bucks, finally starting to deliver for the Titans. Then we have BC Johnson, who's holding off who the presumed starter, Justin Jefferson, which of those two would you be willing to start Santiago? Uh, I don't know. I'm going to pull a Duncan neither, but uh, if I have to pick, uh, I'd go Humphreys. Honestly. Humphreys. Yeah. 
it's it's tough. It's two mediocre passing offenses, but uh, BC Johnson has gotten a stable share of targets in the first two weeks. So uh, I'll go that way, kind of knowing what I'm going to get here. Yeah, the Vikings offense hasn't shown much in terms of passing for any kind of value, but that's going to change sooner or later, right? Maybe. All right, so jumping ahead, uh, the Dol- uh, Dallas Cowboys are visiting the Seahawks. Who are we looking to start? Dalton Schultz for Blake Jarwin. Alden Smith. Now, I had recommend trying to move him after week one, but if you didn't, are you comfortable starting him this week in IDP? Or David Moore, who's had three receptions each week for 76 yards and a TD. Who are we looking to start among Dalton Schultz, Alden Smith, or David Moore? I'll go to you, Don. You know what? Give me Schultz here. The Cowboys offense has been absolutely prolific passing the football. And Schultz has stepped in and not really missed a beat for the the tight end fill-in here. So I think he's the way to go of the assembled crew here. Duncan? I think uh, Schultz, yeah. Um, he seems he seems to, he's got to fill in that role for Dak Prescott. I think he's probably one of the the sneaky waiver ads that a lot of people have uh, picked up this week if he has been available. Santiago, I'm not a fan of the deeper weapons of the Dallas Cowboys, and when Jarwin went down, uh, I can't trust Schultz, so I have to go with David Moore here. Russell Wilson has been playing like an MVP, and he might catch some balls from Russell Wilson. So that's all you need, really. All right. The Detroit Lions are at Arizona. Who are we willing to start? Quinton Cephas. Uh, Quintez Cephas, sorry. With the second most targets on the team. DeAndre Swift, six touches a week. One, ten touches week. Two, does it continue to climb? Or IDP, Chris Banjo, playing 95% of the snaps. 15 tackles with one pass defense. This is a career season for him. Who are you starting, Don? I'm going to go Banjo here. In an IDP situation, this guy has proven to be extremely valuable. Depending on your scoring system, that can be between 15 and 20 points a game, and that would be a huge day out of Swift. And with Galladay likely playing this week, Cephas is back to the bench. So uh, I'll take Banjo here. I'm not a big IDP guy, okay. but I'll trust what Don said. However, I do like... I'm, I'm sorry, I uh, lost my train of thought. What were the guys again? Uh, Cephas, DeAndre Swift, and Banjo. Right, right. Uh, DeAndre Swift. He's in that three-headed backfield that it's not great for him. But he had an unfortunate drop week one. And if he can get his rapport with Matthew Stafford back again, I think he can produce at a high level. All right, and finishing us off, let's look at the Monday night game. Kansas City at Baltimore. Who are we going to start? Demarcus Robinson, 10 targets in two weeks. Gus Edwards, 11 touches in week two. Or Miles Boykin, who's had nine targets in two weeks. Now, a little question I pose to myself is, what is a target worth on a team? So I took a look at the total targets, the total fantasy points, derived from those targets just to see what a target was worth for a player raven targets are worth 2.5 points kansas city targets are about 1.64 so i say that just to put the miles boykin targets versus the demarcus robinson targets so you have a base of reference so demarcus robinson gus edwards or miles boykin Santiago. Now that you just mentioned the worth of a target, I have to plug that at Broto Fantasy, we have a stat called True Target Value that measures exactly the worth of a target depending on the QB. And that's a true throw value. And then you get the true target value for each receiver and what they do with that target. Because not all targets are created equal. However, that said, I do have to pick Gus Edwards here. I think that three-headed backfield, again, is not ideal for him, but he's been getting the touches, and he is a very talented running back. If he gets the opportunity again, he will produce. All right, Don. Uh, I'm going to go Robinson here. I know it's typically bad form to take a KC wide receiver that is not of the main starting variety, but 
the targets Robinson gets, he's definitely the guy taking the top off of the defense the majority of the time and would have had another 60 yards in passing week one had that not gone for P.I. instead of being the completion it should have been had he not gotten absolutely mugged. So it only takes one and you're getting 60 plus and probably a TD out of Robinson. So that's where I'm headed. Uh, We'll go Robinson here. Yeah, I'm going to go with Gus Edwards. Uh, He seemed to be getting a lot of valuable targets uh, and touches, I should say, during the game uh, down the stretch. So I'm going to look to start Gus Edwards out of those and hopefully I'll hit the jackpot this week. Um, I do like Miles Boykin and Demarcus Robinson, but I don't know how willing I am to start in those situations. I at least know Edwards is going to touch the ball uh, at least once. Um, Well, I love doing experiments like this, taking a look at depth charts, because these are the, these are the situations we are all being put in on a weekly basis. Uh, Especially now, I I don't think it's going to be better for like two or three more weeks. I think we're going to see tons of injuries. I hope not because I don't have any guys left to start. So time for tags, uh, thoughts, let the writers know where to find you, Don. Yeah, I, I tend to choose happiness. So I stay off of the social media, but if you need me, you can always reach me at rider dynasty and word will get to me. And I promise to ignore it completely. No, really. I'll actually answer you as far as where we're at though, man, it is still so good to have football back. And if you want that to continue for the love of God, please, please wear your masks. Yes, Duncan. Um, the last time I was on, I pretty much gave away my address. So this time, I'll probably end up inviting everyone around for a Super Bowl party. So <laughs> I'm not going to say any more. But um, yeah, please wear a mask. Yeah, he's at D-U-N-C-A-F-C. Santiago. You can find me at FF underscore Casanova. Everything I write is there or at BrotoFantasy.com. Thank you for coming on. Thank you so much. Santiago for bailing us out. Same to you, Duncan. Uh, I'm at JJ Wenner, and from from all of us, all of you, be safe, be well, be kind, and as always, boat drinks, my friends, boat drinks. Boat drinks.